this is a list. On this list, the greatest films ever made. You know something? You're right. Go ahead, make my day. Oh, righty then. A rolling sound. What you just said. I drink it up. Is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. I experienced more with the film. Here we go, very quiet, please. I'm a very particular set of skills, and I will have my vengeance. Action. All right, listeners. I'm glad that you made it. Now, welcome to the greatest movie podcast of all time. Yes, hello. John North is here. John, say hello to the peeps. Hello, hello, everybody. I'm here. I'm on top of a giant mountain looking down. <laughs> it's cold. There's a big breeze. There's snow everywhere. Dean actually, uh, Dean actually looks like he's sliding down a mountain right now. Yeah, I'm, in a, I'm, in a, I'm in a whiteout. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, it's just me and my emotions on top of a mountain. This might be emotional. Um, if you guys haven't seen The Alpinist, go watch it right now. When I'm in the mountains, life is so incredibly simple. Who impresses you right now? This kid, Mark Andre Leclerc. He's been doing all kinds of crazy alpine soloing. What I'm doing is on rock, and then I see Mark Andre free soloing on ice and snow. First time I heard about Mark, he's living in a snow cave on the parkway or something. He is pushing things that is pretty much unknown. Um, Come back, hit play, hit subscribe. Um, this episode is brought to you by Boss Auto. Visit bossauto.ca to get your new vehicle today. Um, auto, boss, so, auto, baby. Let's get right into the this beautiful mm -hmm. motion picture, the yeah. Alpinist. What'd you guys think? So, spoiler alerts, right? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just get right to it and say, um, I'm so sad that he died. I'm so sad that he died. But I'm not surprised that he died. I, yeah. I mean, it's not a shocker, right? I, and I kept looking over at my wife as I'm sweating, as my, my fists are balled up, clenched together, and I'm on the edge of my seat in full panic mode. Because mm -hmm. what this guy is doing is not human. You know, zero fear. That's something I've never experienced. I don't know if this guy has fear. I'd love to ask him, you know, hey, do you have fear? Because... I don't think he has any fear. Uh, no. I don't think so. I mean, I mean, maybe not to maybe other things in life, but definitely not uh, when it comes to, I guess, like physical like ability or uh, something like that. Maybe he fears like something else, you know, I don't know. But when it comes to, you know, death defying uh, stuff like he, yeah, didn't seem like he had any at all. No, they, they actually asked him after one of the climbs on one that was like, melted ice and snow all over the peak and they're like was that scary like how scary was that you must have been terrified he's like oh no it wasn't scary at all it was just like it was a pretty good day i guess like he just had no emotion regarding fear it was is abnormal yeah that's was, that, and, that and that's why i was just sweating the whole time and I, I i was in utter shock the entire documentary and i don't even know if it's a good documentary i don't i, I didn't even really have time to think about it dylan because i'm so in utter shock and I have, I do have so much respect for this guy, um, for his accomplishments and what he, you know, was achieving or has achieved. Uh, but I kept looking over at my wife saying, something's going to go wrong. It just takes one rock to break one avalanche, one thing to go just, just a little wrong. Cause that's all it takes is something that's just a little wrong and you're dead. And I go for how for how many of these giant hike uh, uh, climbing adventures he's going on constantly. It's not like once a year or twice a year. It's constant. I go the chances of something bad happening, which bad happening means death. It, it's just it it just seems like it was an an in, inevitable. Yeah, it kind it kind of was it kind of was, and uh, unfortunately, you know. He, he's going into places that people have never gone before or, you know, in, in conditions and times of year that people have never done things. So there's no like, uh, you know, reference, like, you know, how many people have climbed, uh, you know, uh, uh, what's it called? Half dome, you know, people know, okay. Like 
they know what's safe. They know like what rocks or, you know, they know the conditions. They know, mm-hmm. you know where things are, where, where to go. But the things he was doing were just things that have never been done before. So the only way to, to know is to do it. Yeah, I just couldn't get past the fact that he was just climbing those vertical frozen waterfalls. Um, that was, I think, the most, I think, insane, uh, you know, psychotic type of behavior was just climbing the face of, you know, frozen frozen water. I mean, that's all it takes is you hit the axe too hard, it cracks it, you fall, you know, thousand feet. It's, it's funny you say that, Dean, because that was my favorite part. That was the, that I should say that was the part that I was most tense on, you know, thinking how, how does an icicle not just go click? Yeah. And, and then you're dead. And, and to not even have that thought, I mean, I would be, I would freeze, panic, and try to call nine one one, but nobody's going to come rescue you. That's the thing. There's no, there's no helicopter that can come get you. Mm-hmm. Like, there's you, you're not going to pull out a cell phone. He, he didn't even have a phone with him. You know, and, and you know, solo, which uh, sorry, I have uh, oh, I, I can't eat while I'm on the show, baby. Yeah, yeah, love you. <laughs> sorry, my wife was bringing me dinner there, and. I don't want to eat while I'm chatting with you guys. Um, <laughs> you know, Solo, I'm um, forgetting his name, though. Mark andre Leclerc. Right. Incredible. Incredible. You know, but, you know, and I, and I hate putting a butt on the end of that. But after watching The Alpinist, you know, he climbed, he practiced, like Dean was saying, he practiced that climb multiple you know for 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 many attempts so he got to know the landscape know the rock and then he eventually went out with no rope and climbed it or are you talking about um the uh alex honnold guy right the the yeah, documentary yeah. solo solo free solo yeah yeah but do you wow. make the point that's this this guy is so beyond that even and i didn't even think there was a human on this planet that would go beyond that that solo documentary yeah um the fact that he's just ran not randomly, but picking a mountain, climbing it with no practice at all. Yeah. He's a, yeah, there, get, there is no the, practice. There's no practice. He's a savant. He's, he's what you call a savant of alpinism or mountain climbing. That is him. He grew up looking at pictures of mountains, wanting to climb them. Nothing else mattered. That is his vice. That's what he loves. He's known that it seems since a very young age. And uh, yeah, he makes free solo look amateur, which says Guys, a lot, which says a lot. I never thought I would say that. I never no, thought I'd say I'm a big, so, that, that. I'm a big fan of that documentary <clears throat> and, and that athlete. What'd you guys think? No, yeah. I mean, I thought it was, you know, something that it was, it's hard to relate to because it's just not anything that I would ever be interested in doing personally. I mean, I would... You know, I would do some normal hiking of some sort, but like, and I, I like being outdoors, but that there's just not a, a draw to that for me. I just don't, I just can't comprehend, comprehend putting yourself in that, in those positions. Um, it's just a different breed, a different, you know, different, different wires, you know, everybody's, you know, wired their own way, but that's just, uh, yeah, very unrelatable. I, I guess be like my one word, uh, <laughs> my yeah. one word, uh, synopsis of it. Yeah. That's interesting. What, wait, what's your one word, Dean? Uh, unrelatable. Unrelatable. That's a good one. It's really good. Mine is a uh, emasculated because um, <laughs> I don't have I don't have the cojones. I don't have the balls to do that. Who does? Uh, this guy apparently. But that's the thing, Dylan. It's like, who does? I mean, uh, besides this guy, I mean, there's one man on planet Earth, or one person on planet Earth that would do this, and it's this guy. Mm. You know, like even all the professionals, the legends in the game are like, this guy is on a whole other planet. Yeah. Oh, nobody's done with this guy just to be like, hey, I'm going to climb that. Just climb it. You know, by himself too. No GoPro, no YouTube videos, no selfies, no self-promotion, no advertisements. He's not, he doesn't have a Red Bull helmet on. No. This guy's like, I mean, he left the documentary crew. Something Donnie would do, by the way, Donnie Shankle. <laughs> he was, he definitely had some Shankle vibes. How he would just kind of ghost right. away in the middle right. of like a, a of a production and just disappear and go to another country just to like do some climbing and not tell anybody. 
I mean, think about that. He, a whole film crew, and he's just like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go climb a mountain by myself, and nobody's gonna know about it. Yeah, I remember he said that. It, he said that one of his things was he doesn't feel like it's a true solo if there's a camera crew or there's anybody else there at all. He said a true solo is when you are, it's you in the mountain, and that's it. And I thought that was really interesting. I think it grounds it's like him a in spiritual. A yeah, I think yeah, it's it like grounds a spiritual him. situation. I think that's how he deals with a lot of stuff. Um, like they mentioned, he had a drug problem or he got into some stuff mm -hmm. he wasn't happy with back in the day. And I think it's just how he he deals with he, he well, he's passionate about it, clearly. He does it for himself, clearly. But I think also he uses it to just kind of get through the some of the bad parts of life. And I think with it with people there and cameras there, he's not getting that. Yeah, that self fulfilling kind of prophecy thing, I guess. Yeah, that's a good point, Dylan. You know, to to penny back off what what Dean has said there, um, when he said unrelatable, I I, I think about what I love uh, as far as you know outside of my family, of course, and I love weightlifting, uh, and I, and I love performing weightlifting as an athlete. If I trained weightlifting in my garage with the door shut, with no phone and nobody else, would I do it six days a week? And the answer is no. <laughs> oh, the answer is no. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be transparent with you. I, I think my favorite part of weightlifting is the community aspect, the podcast, you know, uh, cheering on people, uh, people cheering on you, talking about PRs, like the whole world of weightlifting. I love traveling, the meets, the camps, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so just closing my garage door and just doing weightlifting by myself six days a week. I don't know. It's like, it's like Ian, Ian Wilson is the uh, Mark Andre of the weightlifting world. That, that is true. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's a pretty good comparison. Very so, niche, uh, very niche reference to uh, our audience. But so I guess what I'm saying is like, if I'm going to go climb this mountain, I, I want to like, I want to video the whole thing. I want like almost credit. And, and I can admit that, like I would be taking pictures and posting on Instagram and uh, connecting with other people, you know, and not, not to sound too, uh, you know, what, what's that word I'm looking for? Um, I, I guess connecting with other people and what we love to do is something I would like to do. So for him just to go out by himself and be like, screw it, no phone. I'm just going to do it because I love it. I mean, do you guys agree with me or, or am I off on that? Uh, no, I don't, I don't, I don't think, um, I mean, I, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just don't really do anything that extreme, you know, to really like on my own, I guess I, I I'm a, I can self-motivate, um, you know, when I'm alone, like say I'm, if I'm working out at my house in the garage, like, you know, I can get through a full hard workout by myself with no, um, you know, kind of like, you know, things going on, but it's not nearly comparable to that, I guess, you know, I'm not going to go for like a PR snatch by myself. I need to be in an environment. I need to be with my crew. I need to be with my people. I need to, I need my hype crew. I need, you know, I need all that. So I guess, yeah, I guess I do agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. There's something about training. I mean, any sport, um, working out, climbing mountains, weightlifting, there is something about training by yourself, how much harder mentally it is to push yourself. Like if someone's watching you or especially if a group of people is watching you, it is for some reason, ego, maybe it's easier to go a little harder, but if you're by yourself after work at night or something, and you're, you're killing yourself and just to get the like you can go through the motions by yourself. That's easy, but like to actually push yourself and PR and, you know, set all these new goals and actually accomplish them by yourself. There is a feeling in that, that is, it's different than doing it in front of a crowd. I don't know if it's better or worse and it's a lot mm -hmm. harder. There's they're few and far between. It's much easier with people around you and like-minded individuals. But if you can get to that spot by yourself, I think it is beneficial, but would I do it? as often as this guy did it, not yeah. a chance, not a chance. <clears throat> yeah. It's such a good point, Dylan. I, I, in junior college, I took a theater class. Well, here, let me tell you the quick, quick story. I don't want to bore people, but basically long story short is I had to take this theater class to play football. 
the following year because, of course, I had bad grades. Well, I failed. So the theater lady pulled me aside. She said, John, we have a play this summer. And I really want you to be this character in this play. Uh, it was like this soldier, bad guy, <laughs> type, like Arnold Schwarzenegger character. You know, here I am, this like football jock guy. She goes, this is crazy. This is a true story. She goes, I will pass you if you commit to this play. She said, she was like bribing me. <laughs> so I said, okay, I'll do it. If, as long as you give me like a C plus, <laughs> yeah. a C, whatever, I will do this. I will commit to this play. You have my word. There's nothing in writing. So she gave me the C. I, should, I didn't miss one rehearsal. I did this entire play. And it was like two weeks of performances. And I'll tell you right now, it never happened. And what I mean by that, it happened in my eyes. Nobody came to see me do the play. There's no footage. There's no pictures. Uh, the, the, the very last performance, you know, how they have the flowers and the big party, you know, the, for the last show. Mm -hmm. Nobody was there for me, of course. And I remember seeing everybody crying and hugging and celebrating that, you know, they just wrapped up this giant, this, this, this play. Um, I never even got a chance to say goodbye to the teacher. I just remember standing there going, I am so alone right now. This is crazy. And, and I did kind of feel used. It was a weird feeling, but I still got the C. So I remember just walk, I walked away in the darkness, walked back to my dorm room, went to bed, woke up the next morning. And it's like, it never happened. That's crazy. My parents don't know I did it. My wife now does. I told her the story. But it was, I don't know. I know I'm kind of off on this, but I guess my feeling is, it's like, I, but it's stuck with me forever. I think about it at least twice a week. Mm -hmm. And this was at back in 2004. And so it's impacted me my whole life. And I've actually even tried to reach out to the teacher to have some closure, but I can't find her. Um, and so maybe I get a little glimpse of maybe that's how he feels when he just goes up and hikes a mountain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like that. That's a good little story. <clears throat> yeah. That's you, great. uh, you kind of just did it for yourself <clears throat> and for, um, to, you know, cause there was a goal in mind. Right. But there was no, um, production of like, you know, look what I'm doing. It was very mm -hmm. like private, almost private, intimate. Well, it seems like there was not even a congratulations right. or like, a. Uh, thanks for doing the play. It seems like she didn't even acknowledge you after she Nothing. got what she wanted. Yeah. Yeah. That's the tough part. I think, I think yeah. he, if, even if the teacher would have came up to you and um, said anything, really, I think mm -hmm. that would have been uh, a lot better than what happened. And yeah, think about the fucking amount of mountains this guy's climbed that no one's no like knows about. Like, yeah. Hundreds probably All for himself. <laughs> not being selfish, but for himself, like within, you know, it's, yeah. it actually, the more I think about it, like when you guys said, Hey, let's do this podcast. I've really been doing some reflecting on it thinking, you know, I think we could do a better job of this in, in other aspects of our life. Like I know Dean, um, I don't even know if I should mention this, but I can cut it out if it, you uh, a, a family member passed. And uh, I remember Dean telling me about it. And I, for some reason, I, 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 I couldn't find it on social media. Like I went to his Instagram and stuff and it was like, I didn't post about it. Why, why? I don't need to put everything out on social media. It can be just personal. Right. And that has always stuck with me. I actually think about that conversation we've had Dean, like literally multiple times a week. And I just, I think that you could watch this and we could take something away from this guy. Now, I do agree with Dean in the beginning of the show, 100% not worth it. No way for me is that worth it. Putting your life on the line. I'm sorry. I, I love my family too much. You know, uh, even being a single guy, it, let's, let's put me back, you know, John North, like 20 years old. I always knew that I wanted to have kids. And a family. So even as a single guy 
who was kind of wild and crazy, I still don't, I, I wouldn't risk my life for that or for anything. What do you guys think? Yeah, there, well, I don't think there was ever a, there was, I mean, I know the documentary was really hard to even get anything out of him at all um, from the crew, but it didn't seem like that that was even anything that he would even be remotely interested in. Mm. Um, is like having a family or like being, you know, trapped in a yeah. like, you know, family situation. I think for him, it's always been like, I need to be able to just wander and do whatever I want with no, no strings attached kind of lifestyle. Like kind of like a, you know, like a, like a loner. He's just kind of a loner. He likes to be alone. He likes to, mm. um, he likes the freedom of just literally waking up one day and going to South America, you know, like, and climbing something. I don't think he ever wanted anything that would hold him back from that. Which is kind of sad in a way. It is. If you think about well, it, it is pretty sad. Um, I mean, he did share moments with his girlfriend, like they do take turns climbing and he seems like he's into it as much engaged. as he can engage with what she's doing as much as he can be, even though her thing might not be, nearly as crazy as what he does but he's still, still there for her but it seems like he just needs to get more of a fix on the free solo things and i don't know maybe i don't know what what it is uh, maybe he's that's just how he's happy maybe that's he's dealing with something i don't know i don't know what it is but it was fascinating to watch yeah. anyone love anything as much as that guy loves mountains fascinating <laughs> I, you nailed it, Dylan. If it was a fascinating human, fascinating human. It was. He was almost, um, in a way, he was almost like not human. You know what I mean? He was almost more of like an animal. Yes. Yeah. He was almost more, you know, animalistic in his nature. Just like even the way he moved, the way he flowed up the mountain wasn't very human-like. It was very, almost like he was part of this. You know, he was part of this universe. He was part of this of this of this mountain like it was just an extension of it that's a good point yeah because you know like um wow. you know how like alex hano was even like saying like he was in the documentary a little bit saying like he just doesn't like move normally like he's it's i don't think he was trained at all how to climb mountains by the sounds of it he just kind of picked it up and then just excelled at it and maybe another piece to your animalistic thing which is a good point is that it seems like when he's on the mountain, he doesn't like think about thinking. You know what I mean? Like animals don't think about their thoughts. They just react. Mm -hmm. And it seems like he's very good at that, which is why he can set the fear aside. That's why he can not get nervous, all that kind of stuff. Well, I was, go ahead. Sorry, Dean. No, no. Yeah. I was just going to piggyback on that and say that, yeah, he was very, in, he just moved with instinct, not with, uh, he wasn't driven by fear or, uh, or doubt. It was just pure instinct. Like, Hand goes here, foot goes here, but like without thinking about it, it just it was just second nature. He was like I'm saying, he was just kind of just connected to it all. Well, it's God, it's so it's so true. It's it's almost like guys, he tapped into a part of his brain that almost like no human has tapped into yet. You know, there's that saying. I don't know if it's true or not, but you know, we only use like ten or fifteen percent of our brains. You know how they say we only use ten percent of our brains. I think we only use 10% of our hearts. I don't know if that's true, but if that is true, you know, he might have tapped into something that no human has ever gone to mentally. I mean, come on. You watch that documentary. What he did is by far, in my opinion, from my eyes, the most impressive, jaw dropping, um, Human just feet, human feet, human yeah. physical feet. Yeah. Thank you. I, I have yeah. ever witnessed. I, I know I watched it on a TV screen, but I have ever witnessed in my entire life. Well, John, people went to the moon. Well, first of all, I don't know about that, but second of all, second of all, there's fine. Put me in a spaceship. It's not, it's not, it's impressive, but what he did was just truly remarkable. Well, there's also like, like, you know, even thinking about something like that is like, there's a lot more people involved in something like that than there is just this guy taking on this, these rocks and his body. There's no, you know, there's nobody working on the suit. There's nobody working on the ship. There's nobody, it's just him 
in his shoes. Yeah, that's it. In his hands. It didn't even look like he ate much. He just, this is just what yeah, he does. Yeah, he just, he did, and he also wasn't like talking about like, oh, it's crazy, like workout regimen or diet. There's no doubt that that guy's stronger than anybody in, oh, like, yeah. you know, like pound for pound and anybody work in this uh, podcast or any and people in general. You know, I mean, the guy that could just pull his body in any direction he needed to at any moment, yeah. in, in any crevice. Um, the balance, the just the awareness, body awareness is just unbelievable. Well, now, John, I want to get your pers- like perspective on this. And I don't want the listeners to take it the wrong way because it's it's terrible that he passed away. It's the worst thing ever. This guy That's loved to do sad. what he did, what he was doing. It's incredibly sad. But from a film perspective only, what a plot point in the movie, right? Like, I didn't see it coming. Like you said earlier, like I did, I told Dean this, I think I told Dean this on the phone or no, I told you this when I was talking to you and Kaomi. Yes. 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 What happened? Was it just ringing? It was just, no, it was saying yes over and over again. Yes, 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 yes. On a loop, on a loop. Oh, no. You're going to have to edit that, of course. Actually, you probably leave a little bit in, though, to make it funny. So, Dylan, there was some wording. I remember looking at my wife a few different times, and I go, hey, you catch that, babe? She goes, what? I go, the way they're speaking about him, and I apologize. What's his name again? Mark. Mark. With a hyphen, he's a cool guy. Okay. Yeah, your volume's a little low too, Dylan. Okay. I think. Um, I'm like the way they're talking about him, and this is like early on in the documentary, even in the, the early on the middle. I'm like, almost it's. I go, it's almost past tense. Like they slipped up a little bit. Mm-hmm. You no. Know? Just by the 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 way they were talking it a few times. So I remember thinking to myself, oh. I think he dies in the end. Damn. But then again, it's not a shock. No. Like, you're not shocked when you find out. Like, oh, you're sad. You're like, darn it. That sucks. But then again, you know, and and Dylan, you, you ask a good question because. Does it make the film better? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think so too. I think so too, you know, but well, I don't know. That's a tough one because if he did live, maybe he made a better one later. Yeah. You do part right. two, they keep going on them. I mean, it well, the way that the, the way that it was, the way that it was set up, there wasn't like a big celebratory thing after he did the big, the big climb, you know, he went up one time, he goes up once weather conditions get bad. He comes back down. Then he just goes up and does it. And then, then, you you know there's still 20 minutes left and you're like okay he did it and there wasn't like this big like dramatic music dramatic like celebratory thing of like you did this mountain and you know that there's they haven't talked about anything else like this was the the thing to climb right so you're just like okay what's what's coming next here like how are they gonna wrap this up see gosh that's such a good point i i think dean Boy, I, I really want to be careful how I put this. I, I'll just say what I'm thinking, and I hope it doesn't come across bad. But in a way, I think he was suicidal. And I, I'm probably not correct on that term. Maybe what I'm trying to say is he knew he was going to eventually die climbing a mountain. And I, I, I personally feel like he, he thought it was going to be semi, semi around the corner. Mm. But maybe that's just my brain thinking that and his brain that is obviously very different than ours. Yeah. On turning off the fear completely and claiming fallen waterfall ice walls a billion feet high with no rope and an ice pick. Like Dean was saying, that crazy part, right? I mean, the whole thing was crazy, but that part was wild. Yeah. Like, well, do you guys think he was suicidal? Like, you think he was ready to die? What do you think? I think that to him, 
almost like death was not even a um, necessarily a um, a thought, but also like I think he knows that that that's a possibility. But I think to him, if it were to happen, he's just kind of one of those like go with the flow kind of people. Where it's like, this is how I go out. This is how I go out. I'm not going to stop doing right. I think I, it was almost like a, uh, maybe he didn't respect living. Maybe he figured if I, if I don't, if I'm not climbing, I'm not living at all. That's what I was going to get to. I think he'd rather be dead than have a broken leg for the rest of his life and not be able to climb at all. Personally, like uh, as an outsider looking in, that's what I think. And I, I, I do like wonder knowing nothing about climbing mountains and free soloing. It is crazy to me that the one time he doesn't free solo, he goes up with another guy in Alaska, is the one time he doesn't come back alive. My wife mentioned like, that. Like that's, was it, he was distracted? Was it the avalanche was inevitable and it, it had nothing to do with him being there? Or was it another guy made a mistake? Like you don't know, but um, it just, it kind of makes you wonder. And even his wife said, not in the documentary, but I watched an interview. She's like, even if he broke his leg, he would find a way down. Like he's just, that's him. Like I, I know him to a moral certainty. Like he, there's no way he wouldn't get down if he, if he could. So yeah. it's crazy. Or maybe the other guy fell and he went to save him. Like, I don't know. You don't know. No one was there. Right. Um, but it, it just, maybe that's why he preferred free soloing. Cause there was, maybe it took him out of that state of mind when there was someone else there, you know what I mean? Yeah. Depending on your, depending on somebody else for your safety, it was definitely not something he was interested in. Yeah. He was ready to own everything by himself. Yeah. He didn't want someone else to have to worry about him or vice versa. I don't think. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't want the distraction. I I thought um, the filmmakers did a good job too, of letting him be him and giving him space when he kind of ran away. They were, they seemed to be, they, they, you know, they seem to be cool about it and supportive and, I think they it, they understood who they were dealing with to a certain extent. Like this guy's the real deal. Like we're dealing with the real deal here. And anytime you get somebody, I feel like who's the real deal, I feel like there comes, um, with that comes possibly misunderstanding and 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 hurdles that you have to get through. Right. Because you know? how could you understand them? Yeah. It's possible. I did my favorite part though. Heavy duty. You remember Heavy Duty, the seven-year-old hula hooper? That guy this was This guy, great. he was that amazing. Was the hula hooling they did was amazing. Yeah. They were good. They were good. Those are some industrial, uh, uh, professional-grade hula hoops, too. Those are like the ones you see in the schoolyard. Those <laughs> were, like, real, real nice. Yeah. They're free. And he was just, I thought it was uh, interesting, you know, how even, uh, I think Heavy Duty says that um, he thinks that Mark Andre was, he was not supposed to be born in this era. You know, he's a he was supposed to be born in a different time, a different era of more of a free spirited world, like the seventies or the sixties, you know, he just doesn't fit in with modern day society at all. Oh, yeah, yeah, Living outside, like just in a tent, you know, he was basically just homeless living on the land. Um, I, and I always, I like that part about it too, because I have a very big um, desire to just take my family and like live out in the wilderness. And just completely get off the grid completely, you know, just completely just homeschool my kids, hunt animals, you know, find clean water and uh, keep them safe and just live in the wilderness like that. That's intriguing to me. Um, And so to see him actually do that, you know, I know he doesn't have kids or anything, but you know, it was pretty cool. It's like, Hey, this guy's just going to live in the wilderness, live, live on, live on the planet. I remember Mike Bledsoe at the Arnold a few years ago from Barbell Shrugged, you know, Dean knows Mark, uh, uh, Mike Bledsoe. Oh, you know, Mike? Uh, well, I used to watch his shit. I don't know. Him. Oh yeah. I, yeah. I used to watch his stuff. Yeah. And I, I remember saying, um, and this is Dean will know this is just so Bledsoe. I said, where are you, so where are you living at now, Mike? And he's like planet earth. <laughs> Right. This is something he would say, but, you know, and uh, I'm like, love it, baby. You know, and like, that's just that mindset. I respect, I respect that mindset, you know, and, and it's intriguing to me, even though I'm never going to do it because I like my life now. 
I don't know. Do you guys have that same desire at times just to be like, you know what? I'm just going off the grid all the time. Yeah, I think it's, I think, yeah, I think that's definitely uh, something that a lot of people think about and just, uh, you know, romanticize about. Right. You know, I think it's a, it's a fun thing to think about. I also think um, it was very interesting too, that he was like living in a, underneath the stairs in the stairwell. Like uh, we were saying before, like, like Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah that's where he met his girlfriend it took True. her back they to the stairwell and they de- decorated it together you know after when she kind of moved into the stairwell they kind of decorated it a little bit uh we'd have to fly john over some coffee beans if you lived in the wilderness just a little care package every now and then a little drop box drop box you know you might think i'm crazy for saying this but i i think there's actually kind of a possibility that he wasn't human I know that's like a really weird thing to say, but I think what he did to a certain extent was physically impossible, mentally and physically. Like I'm, I'm going to go that extreme on this right now. Like that's all I'm going to say. Look, Bigfoot's real. Bigfoot, probably. Bigfoot is literally a spiritual, um, demon something um i could go on on this i can kind of go down this rabbit hole but i I wouldn't be shocked if this dude was not human i hope he's not human so i don't feel as terrible about myself and my own physical abilities (laughs) well i think what you're also looking at with him is you're looking at a product of an expanded mind through like psychedelics you know because you mentioned the fact that he was a frequent uh partaker in you know, the psychedelics to the extreme level. Yeah. He wouldn't always take and one. He would take six or something. Yeah. 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 And I think that has something to do with his um, expanded imagination and where he's like thinking about maneuvers that people just aren't normally thinking about. Like, you know, and that could also be somewhere with like down the road where like you can think about maybe that's where he lost maybe some of that fear is through that. Have you guys seen on Netflix? My wife is- started watching this and it's one of those that I got roped into and then loved it. I mean, we should do a whole review on it really, but it's called nine perfect strangers. It's on Netflix. Um, it actually has the bad guy, the Italian bad guy and boardwalk empire on it. Ooh. Most underrated show on planet earth. Amazing. Thank you. I Nucky, agree. Nucky Thompson. Man. You're amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, nine perfect strangers. If you're looking for something to watch, check it out. It's really, really good. I won't give it away, but one of the things is... is which Tim, which guy? Which guy? He is the Italian guy that is the bad With the guy. belt? The belt guy? I remember the belt guy. Not him. Who, who looks like Ray Romano a little bit? Or no, yes. Ray Romano's brother. Yeah. Type in Nine Perfect Strangers on like Google. I think I know who you mean. Yeah, yeah. And he kills it. But there's it's a, it's a show with a lot of big big time actors in it and actresses, but... Um, basically there's a lot to the show, but one of the things is you take psychedelics and you see, um, you know, the, the, one of the couples lost their son from suicide, but when they take these psychedelics, they could see him and talk with him and interact. And, uh, that brings closure and all this. So it's a whole process. So I think, I think that Dean's right on with something with that, where the, with these type of drugs, can do something to your mind that completely takes fear away and almost puts you in a reality. That's not of ours. I would, I would, uh, I would believe that definitely is now like now more than ever, like the experimental drugs they use to treat PTSD and all sorts of stuff. Like it's, it's, I don't think we've even tapped what we were capable of with psychedelics. I think it'll be used for a lot more things in the future like maybe this i wonder if um too it's like you think about you know the tragedy at the end right and you think about how like even then they did kind of like go up top and they had the cell phone service yeah remember that and they were able to like send messages to their kind of loved ones hey we're up here heartbreaking i thought that was brutal that they were actually like on this rare occasion can actually like communicate yeah so everybody knew that they made it to the top you know and then they knew that that's what happened. It was on the way down. And you can even hear a little bit of doubt in him 
for the only time in the entire um any kind of video documentation of the guy where he's like yeah the way down's not super straightforward but we'll figure it out yeah, yeah. Hear mark and mark say that and you're like interesting very you think that he kind of kind of already had that maybe mapped out or figured out but they're just like didn't really know how to get down yeah mm-hmm. which is probably yeah probably part of the problem as well i want to get your guys ratings on this yeah let's do it i know we don't have much time so i'm ratings I'm excited, on yeah. this film john why don't you start oh man this is a tough one because it's a documentary and it's a true story so it's like it's it's to me it is a little different than rating like a movie because it is it's just it's it is what it is yeah the captured it is what it is so it's hard to it's hard to rank something like this but taking my emotions out completely from just the the mark guy completely but looking at more as like a documentary and the production and everything i i got hmm. hold on here sorry dylan you can edit this out a little bit no it's all right it's it's tough it is tough you know, I, I don't, I, I'm going to give it a, 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 a B plus, you know, I thought it was great. Uh, I, I enjoyed it. I thought they did a great job with it. So I, I'm just going to give it a, just a really good ranking, just a, a solid B plus. I think no matter what you give it, we all know that it's a must watch. Yeah. I think that's something we can all agree on, no matter what the rating is. Dean, what's your rating? I'm going to go, I'm going to go with a solid B. I'm gonna go with the solid B because I I wish I think and it has maybe nothing to do with like um, they were only able to show what they had right I would wanted to see a little bit more um, backstory maybe on him uh, childhood maybe also more more climbing footage you know I would have wanted to see more footage mm-hmm. of other climbs and maybe some like other stuff um, along those lines but I know that they only had what they had. You know, I feel like there was like two documentaries going on at the same time. There's like Mark's accomplishments. And then there was the documentary about the film crew trying to just get something out of this. You know, you know, like those two stories were going like this. And yeah, I cared a lot. I didn't really care about the documentary guys. And they're like, oh, man, this is like, yeah, they not letting took us get over. this footage. I know they took over a little bit. Well, I, Dean, I think that you're so right, because if like a Joe Rogan, right? would have been able to talk with Mark. I think a guy like Joe Rogan could just pull layers back and dive in deep for, and then we could all witness that and hear really what's going on been, in that mind. That would, have been a, that would have been a hell of a Rogan episode. I'll tell you this for free. You put that guy on fear factor. He's going to win every year. <laughs> you yeah, put Mark Andre on Joe Rogan's fear factor. He's not yeah. losing. No fear. No, no. Yeah, so you're. I think that Dean's right. They could have. I would have loved to see them try to pull some more layers back on this on Mark. I, I wanted to get to know Mark more. I want to, you know, to a certain extent, as much as we can, figure out how how he ticks. Yeah, yeah. They kind of they kind of just let him call the shots entirely instead of kind of leaning into him, like forcing more stuff out of him, like a good documentary usually does. Um, mm-hmm. They kind of just like let it like kind of were like, okay, we don't want to like upset you. Yeah, they're tiptoeing a little bit, which he yeah. wasn't really giving, he wasn't really inviting. We'll say that. That's he, true. Dylan, what do you got? Um listen. It's a must watch. <laughs> You're being like me now. It's a must watch. I'll say that. The story, the story, phenomenal. Phenomenal right. story. Phenomenal yeah, a story, a story, phenomenal character that you can't even like make up because he's so unique. Yeah. Um, tragic ending. Um, Storyline wise, it was amazing. Film wise, Free Solo was filmed a lot better, in my opinion, from the cameras they used to the angles they got the footage. And that's obviously because Alex Honnold is used to that thing and he, he kind of accepts it. And I think he likes it at this point, actually. Um, so I think that's why they couldn't get grade a footage. And like Dean said that they were kind of taking over the documentary 
by it was almost a documentary how to make a documentary about a guy who doesn't want to be in a documentary so that part kind of took away from it for me you nailed it dylan so, <laughs> that was like perfectly well said that needs to be a clip it's, <laughs> it's gotta be like it's hard for me because i i, I it's fascinating like i loved it but from a film critic standpoint, it was missing a lot. It was missing a lot. I didn't get to know him at all. And that's just him. But like in a yeah. film, you want to get, there's no character, back layers, though. no character arc. There's no layers getting pulled back. There's nothing. Um, he is what he is. And that's, that's what he does. Um, the, there was some footage of like, you can tell when they're in the helicopters and like, I think there was Red Bull cameras looked beautiful. Then there was a lot of other footage where it was just his friend that he let do it. And it was terrible. Um, he got what he could, but it, it was, it was pretty terrible. So I know universal was a part of it. Red Bull was a part of it. Wow. There's like three other production companies that were a part of it. Like they I didn't realize there was that much there was money. money. Yeah. But, yeah. But you couldn't tell is what I'm saying. Like you couldn't mm -hmm. tell there was that much money behind it. And for that, I'm going to give it a B minus. I'm going to be oh, okay. harsh critic. B minus, but it's I thought you were going to go C something. C no, C, no, no, no. It, Cause it is, it's, it's a very niche. I, I actually like, like a, a weightlifting movie, like on you or Donnie or something that would probably be equivalent to this. Like it is niche. It's really cool, but I, I can't really relate to that ability. Like it's hard. It's not like a love story where everyone can relate to it. It's like, no, this guy does this a handful of other climbers below him. Try but you can't really relate to them, which is on one hand why it's amazing. But on another hand, it's like, that's why it didn't really hit a lot of points that I thought it, it could have. But yeah. B minus. Well, so we got B plus B and B minus. So we're going B. Which puts it at like a, puts it at, it's like an 84. Good. Yeah. That's a that's good, good flick. That's a good flick. It, it's a, it's definitely worth the watch mm -hmm. and you won't be disappointed. And we had like, uh, yeah, I was just going to say, Baron. I was just going to say, is it Barzin or Baron? What is it called? It's Baron. It's Baron or whatever. B-A-R-E-N. Okay. Don't Baron. watch it. Hey, that was going to be our next review. But my least, might, can, I, can I tell you my least favorite movie in the world? This is mine. Baron. Barzin, <laughs> whatever it's called. That's mine now. I know. I know we got to go in like two minutes. My wife has dinner downstairs. Yeah. Um, and maybe we could do a segment on this later, but, uh, um, my my least favorite movie in the entire world is Purge, the first one. Ooh. Purge. See, I, I disagree with you on that one. We go back and forth on this. Before. I hate like, we the other about purges. This. I think the I first think the, one is their be their best one. Yeah, I like the first one. I like Ethan Hawke though. Ethan Come Hawke, on. Training Day, dude. Okay, first of all, you have a revolver. <laughs> You're getting ready, and you have a revolver. I haven't seen it in a while, but it's so Hollywood. Like, where's your, where's your thirty round AR fifteen, dude? We all don't live in Texas, John. We don't all okay. have access to that. Well, this <laughs> guy's house, this whole guy's house is a fortress. You would think you would have better yeah. weapons. No, this is in America. Anybody in America can get an AR AK forty seven or something. You know, he's like, he's like, I'm ready, family. He pulls out a six shot revolver. You lost me. You lost me. I'm done. He's missing. He's missing at least five of those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, it's like it's oh, lost me. Sorry. You miss all the fucking time. It's like that Bill Burr bit. Bill Burr has a good bit about the revolver. I mean, Dean, come on. You know that's you know the purge is coming. You're protecting your family. Obviously, he has money. You're gonna go out and buy an AR-15. That's fucked. You guys yeah, live in a totally, different world. Well, his house is also like very. Um, you know, every single window is like he's he's the guy that installs security systems for homes. Like oh, he's like right. in the movie. Like I think I'm pretty sure he's like for the purge. Like he's like a like almost like a, a, a fortress kind of like owner. Like so, you'd think he'd have better better arsenal for sure. Right. But normally they don't. Remember, I think normally they don't usually creep into those neighborhoods in the movies. Kind of was like the thing. Like normally, yeah, normally they don't creep creep over there. But then for some reason they did. It's time. I gotta rewatch. Maybe it's on the rewatch list because I haven't seen it. In I, it's just give it a fair review. It just it ruined the whole movie for me. 
That's all right. So, it was. It is very Hollywood. You guys have movies too that that when a scene happens, you're like, that's so. You're like yelling at the TV. You're like, come on. All 98 yeah. scenes in Barzen or Barren, Barren. <laughs> all every one of the scenes, I was yelling. That was well, trending. It. It's in the top so, ten, guys. What are you doing? Don't give this any validity. This movie sucks. It, it was. It's. It, I. It, I thought for a while their Netflix was pretty pretty legit because normally everything I watch that's on there has been pretty good. Even the trendy stuff like the bird boxes or that was entertaining. You know, the squid games was entertaining, you know, like all these top trending, you know, even like the don't look up was entertaining. Um, Usually the trending stuff's pretty good you know, or watchable, right. For, for TV streaming. And the, yeah, that one was, was, um, it was shot awful. It was shot in like ultra HD 4k, like a soap opera. Yeah. And there was no, you know, it was like zero depth of field, you know, wide open lens kind of like, you know what I mean? Very crisp. Oh, man. I, I got it. Where it looks, where it looks Sorry, fake man. intentionally supposed to look fake. It's like a soap opera. It's shot like a soap opera. It was disgusting. I, I'm going to watch the terrible. first 15 minutes of it. Cause I, I am now intrigued. <laughs> So I am now literally intrigued to watch this movie. And well, you you couldn't, know, I'm going to tell you a pet peeve um, that this movie had in it. Any movie where you have to voice over all the audio later in a different studio kills me because you can't, there's no possible way you could be in the scene. If you're reading all your lines from a little box in the middle of LA instead of actually mm-hmm. being out in the scene. And it just kills the whole movie every single well, time. Well, Dylan, Dylan, you educate us on that. So why is that even a thing? I, mean, I notice it's a, no I know it's a part of an idea. No I know idea. it's a part of, I know it's a part of like some big shows and big movies. And I know they do that often, but like, I just don't understand it. Why can't they just capture the audio well in live action? You know, like, the, I know like the Mandalorian, you got someone talking under a helmet. You can't do that. Right. So you got to do it, you know, post yeah right which makes more sense though because you can't see his face anyways we usually just have an audio guy that's has the boom and then the the, the beauty these mics can pick up anything now they're, they're amazing I don't, I don't i don't get what you're talking about i gotta so watch. like so like john if we were filming say this podcast say we lost the audio right now but we had the picture and we all tried to dub in our words for the entire podcast does, do you know no what I'm saying? Way. Are you serious? They did the at a, movie at a, at a different point of time. Yes. Well, it's pretty common. It's not. It's not a like lot a, of movies do it, and there's no. It, obviously, you can get a little cleaner audio because there's no background stuff and whatever. But and you want to add your own background noise in, like the door closing. They add all that in, but it it destroys your mood, the actor's mood, because like you're make not it, in the make scene. Make it real. Room. Just make it real. Yeah. So all the, Tar- all the Tarantino's not doing that. No. And everything I've been on, they don't do that. But or M. Night Shyamalan. I like M. Night Shyamalan. The only way I could see it happening is if you lost the audio footage or audio file. That's what's so good about the John Wicks, the choreographic, um, where they, you know, he's really fighting and there's no edited, there's, they're not cutting, cutting the yeah. scene. They're just you, like, they let John it play Wick, out. Yeah, they yeah, let yeah. it play out. Like, you're like, oh my gosh, this is really happening. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What if we, uh, what if we did a review on, uh, an M. Night Shyamalan movie. Uh, six cents, six cents, six. Yeah, that one's, that one's great. It's been talked about a lot, but no one no yeah. one talks about The Happening enough. The Happening? Is that the Mark Bur- Wahlberg? Is that the Mark Wahlberg I just one? was talking about that movie. Who the heck was I talking With the birds? <laughs> yes. With the birds? No. The, well, maybe. The, the Happening is the one with uh, Mark Wahlberg and know. basically the plants... Like the, the, the spoiler of it is like movie's been out for over a decade yeah, yeah. now, but the premise is that everybody's like, like, uh, kind of like, there's this like kind of wind that comes around and it basically people like kill themselves. Oh my gosh. Guys. And no one knows, and no one knows why this is happening. And then they can sense it and feel it coming. It's like this like energy. Right. And then we, and then we later in the film find out that it's, uh, uh, the plants are releasing like a toxin because we're polluting the earth. Yeah, that's yeah, like yeah. getting into our brains to like, almost like a, like a planet cleanse. Yeah. Interesting uh, concept. Uh, Brian Nietzsche, uh, a friend of mine 
It was at my house a few days ago. And he said his favorite actor is Mark Wahlberg. Legend. This was just two days ago. And I looked right at him. I said, my favorite Mark Wahlberg movie. And one of my favorite movies of all time, possibly in the top 20, is The Happening. I said this two days ago. And now we're talking it's about crazy. it. You mentioned it. I, I love that movie. Super underrated. It all is very underrated. All I remember is the birds running away. And maybe it's because they sensed it before the people did. That's the they do. Yeah, they take off. Oh yeah, the animals yeah. knew. Yeah. The animals know it's coming. It's a great I movie. Remember. I gotta rewatch it then. That's a great movie. Um, yeah, we'll, mm-hmm. we'll we'll talk about our next movie for sure. Um, after this, yeah. But this has been episode four, The Alpinist. I suggest you watch it. It's brought to you by Boss Auto. Visit BossAuto.ca and tell them. Film Real Podcast or Film Real Reviews sent you, and they'll hook you up with some free oil changes. What's up? Awesome. Damn. Dang, I need to get up there. <laughs> 100%. No, we got to get down there. It sucks. We can't, go over, we can't go over there, John. We're not allowed there. Oh, come on out to, come on out to Texas. <laughs>